What's up guys? It's your girl Matt Cox with MA Couture Crafting and I cannot be any more excited to be debuting this quilt. This is actually this is my 30th quilt and I think that this one is the best of them all. And I've made some cool quilts but this one right here takes the cake. So what is this quilt? This quilt is a circle Bargello quilt. This is my week on Afros and Pixie Dust, and they are a website that highlights um, Black Disney creators. That's me. We know that I love Disney, but I really wanted to do something uber special for my week. So I picked a quilt, and I think this is the best quilt ever. What is this quilt? Again, it's a circle Bargello quilt, so it's stunning. Bargellos are already usually stunning. Like you, you look and you're like, wow, that's really pretty. I knew that I wanted the quilt to have some movement. I knew that I wanted it to be different. And I knew that I wanted to incorporate this panel in this quilt. So what did I do? I chopped a hole in it. So the Bargello is cool by itself, but to cut a hole in a quilt, what? Who's doing that? Why would somebody cut a huge hole in the center of their quilt? I did it. And then I dropped the panel in there and it's a Thomas Kincaid panel. It's not just any panel. It's a beautiful Disney panel that sits right in the center of it. And it has beautiful, beautiful quilting. It's got like a Baroque vibe around the outside, which I really like. And if all that is not cool to you, and it should be, like, that's cool, right? The fact that I dropped a couple hundred dollars worth of Swarovski stones across the top, oh my gosh. It's just a kiss of magic. It is the magic that this Disney panel needed. I cannot wait to do a couple more of these. I think I actually might sell a couple. I would sell this quilt for $2,500. $2,500, easy. Um, based on the Swarovski stones alone and the fact that I cut a hole in my quilt. I get it. That's a lot. And if you don't want to pay it, I totally understand. I am showing you how to make it. So make your own. Do that. But I've got a couple more tricks up my sleeve for a couple more uh, Disney quilts like this. I'm excited about that. But if all that is not cool, if the stones don't move you, if the fact that I cut a hole in a big old quilt, if the fact that the quilt is actually beautiful by itself does not move you, the label it's on the label. You guys know how I feel about quilt labels. This quilt label has the Beauty and the Beast song embedded in it. So as you're cuddled up with your quilt, you can hit it with your phone and it's going to play the Beauty and the Beast song. And you guys know, you guys know what Beauty and the Beast song I'm talking about. It's the one is they're dancing and they're falling in love and it's just pure magic. And if that doesn't move you, Next to the QR code, there's a really cute, I mean, next to the Spotify, there's a really cute QR code, which has a special message embedded in that for the, um, for the recipient. I hope she loves it because I love it. I can't believe I'm giving this quilt away. I felt a little emotional about it as I was making it. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm giving this away. But I bought another panel to do another one just in case somebody else wants to buy one or I decide that I want to keep one. Um, Thomas and Kay killed it with these panels. And I was like, what am I going to do with them? I know what to do with them now. Um, I've seen people make dresses and, and I've seen other people do some quilts, but they don't quite look like this. You guys, this is it. I've peaked. I don't know what else I can possibly make to top this. Like this is the coolest thing that I think I have in me. If you guys feel the same way, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you'd like to see, oh, the, the fact that I quilted this without you even knowing, like it's invisible quilting. It's it's just kind of genius, guys. I really got to toot my own horn on this one. Um, let me know what you think down in the comment box. Let me know if you think this is cool. Let me know if you've seen it before. If you're over it, let me know. I just want to know all the things, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching this video. And I will see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye. Ooh, it's just so pretty. And of course it has to have a matching bag, right? I'm trying to get a close-up of the rhinestones, but they're hard to capture with the photo. So I cut a ton of strips at two and a quarter. A ton of them. I want to say this fabric pull called for 19 different fabrics. Yeah, that happened. And now we are going to just sew the strips together. There's nothing oh so special about this, except for the fact that my machine, I sewed these suckers together so quick. I mean, it just came together so fast these tubes because that's what we're going for we're going for some tubes so i laid them out in order and i decided to sew all the blue um, ombre and then i would go and sew all the gold and then sew them all together so i sewed them sewed one and then i just started to actually i sewed two sets of two 
which I liked because it caused it not to bow so bad. So I sewed two together, then another two, then another two, and then four. And then I just kept going that way instead of just sewing one next to the other, next to the other, next to the other, which kind of causes it to, to do a bowing thing. So again, uh, another set of two. Look at how fast this is. It takes me, I want to say, a few seconds to do an entire strip. That machine is fast. So I'm laying out the two panels. So I've got my whole blue panel and a whole yellow panel. So right now I'm going to trim the edges just so that I can. That I'm actually not trimming both sides. I just trimmed one side. <laughs> and then I put them right sides together and sew down the sides. One side just doesn't matter because it's going to be excess anyway but you want one side that is nice and crisp and you're going to sew it all the way together till you make a tube see there's no opening it's a whole tube full of fabric so then i line it up the best i can i'm not being overly particular about this i just want to be sure that it's wide enough for my ruler to work on it and i believe i did seven and a quarter this pattern is in the cheryl phillips uh, quilts without corners book so if you're looking for this pattern that's where you're going to get it I kind of go off the um, the pattern a bit because I'm me but you can certainly do a Bargello she's got different sizes and that kind of thing and you guys know I like that book so I am just kind of straightening it out a little bit you see that's my excess I have a lot of that left over which I'll be just tossing to, well, not tossing, but I'll be uh, donating. Now, after you get your tube and you cut all your, your tube pieces. Actually, this is me lining up the next one. I guess I wanted to show you guys twice to make sure you guys got it. Which is all right by me because sewing the tube is the most important part of the Bargello. Something else that I wish that I had done is shorten my stitch more than I did. If you sew at a regular 2.5, bring it down to at least a two. And the object of that is you want to be able to take it out, but you also don't want it to just come out on its own because you are cutting this up quite a bit, quite a bit. So definitely shorten your stitch length it will help you in the long run when you have to start tugging on this puppy because it's a big old circle quilt. So you are working with basically all the bias. Like this quilt is all the bias. So, and all that means is that it's going to stretch because uh, it's not on the, the crosswise grain. It's, it's cutting across it. So now this is where I start to take out the stitches. Pick a place to start. I chose to start where the black was because the black is the easiest to keep track of. And now I'm taking it out. Now there is a much faster way to use a seam ripper. Um, and eventually I start just zoop, running through it. Isn't that pretty? And so now I'm just making sure that my ruler is going to fit. This is a Cheryl Phillips, uh, large Dresden, basically kind of ruler. And, uh, it does fit. Now I'm taking this one out on the same. So you do two of the same. So in the exact same place, that one is taken out. And then I marked it. I wrote on a piece of paper, or number one, and clipped it to that panel. And now you see the second one, the black is shifted down one. That's all a Bargello is, is finding one and just having it move consistently down the quilt. And if, because I'm using, I think I'm using a 10 degree ruler, I need 36 wedges in order to make a complete circle. And so you want to use um, denominations of that when you pick your colors. So that way it moves around completely. And it looks pretty. See, and be careful because at one point I flipped my panels around and it did not keep moving the way that I needed it to. I kept staring at it like something's off, like it's jumping. And that's because... I had gotten confused. So you might need to count 
See, look, I'm looking right now, or you might need to lay these out so that you can see clearly that your Bargello is moving the way that you want, because it's very easy to flip this up. See, look, it's upside down. No, put it the right way. And then you can see, or you can just count. Okay, so now it's time to cut into those panels. And the back of this ruler has some, it feels like sandpaper, which is my favorite uh, stuff to put on the back of this ruler. I got it with some other rulers and I've just been able to kind of cut it down because they gave me so much excess. But don't get those little silicone grippy things. I don't think they work the best. I think sandpaper works better. The sandpaper kind of grip. Or Quilter Select can just come out with a ruler for me. Um, they have this. They have a similar ruler with Creative Grids, but I still get a lot of slippage with Creative with uh, Quilter Select. I never get any slippage, and that's what I'm hoping for in the future. Are some more Quilter Select style rulers that I can really work with. So now we are just going to cut with courage, and we are going to. I walk down the side of mine because it's so long and this circle finishes this quilt finishes at 70 inches uh, 70 inches around which is super cool so I find a couple of points here where I can line this up so right there where that the center I think that one I think it's like 16 inches that one will always line up and that way I'm getting a consistent cut because I do have a little wiggle room from the bottom and the top. When I say wiggle room, I mean the, the fabric has some overhang. So I want to be sure that it's the same in a couple of places. So I just pick a couple of places on the ruler that appear to line up with the line and I make sure that they always line up right there on all of them. And this is them laid out to make sure that I don't make a mess and get all confused because I'm telling you guys at one point I had flipped it and I was like, what on earth is happening? And then I got a little nervous. I was like, did I open them in the wrong places? But no, I just flipped it around and got a little confused. So here is more of the same. Um, when I press these, I pressed them all in the same direction if I had really been thinking about it I guess I could have pressed one panel one way and another panel another direction but that gets very very tricky and because it has so much movement I'm never exactly worried about it lining up perfectly I'm not entering these in any shows and so at this point and so I'm not overly concerned about stuff like that it moves so much that people really aren't drawn to the fact that it does not line up perfectly with each block you can certainly do that if you are, um, you know, if you're particular in that in that way. And I know that there are a lot of people that are and it can be done. I'm just not worried about it. So, I mean, you could stop and press them in the other direction, and make sure that they nest. But I'm just looking for the movement. And because it's a Bargello, again, it just kind of hides it. It's not that serious. So now I'm just sewing the two wedges together. I try not to sew uh, against the direction that they're pressed. I try to make sure they're going, you know with the, the sewing machine, but it's nice and easy. Isn't that pretty? So now it's time to prep this panel. And so the first thing I need to do is figure out how large I want to keep it. I took off about five, maybe four or five inches between both sides. I wanted to be sure to keep the Thomas Kincaid Studios um, in the corner. I wanted to be sure that that stayed. But on the other side, like I took off a whole house and some trees and some other stuff. But it didn't mess with the integrity of the painting. I think that, you know, the focus is going to be Beast and Bell and uh, Lumiere and Cogsworth. And you can see them just fine. And so some of that background I went ahead and parted with. When I was looking at the other panels, I was checking to see that I could cut them down too. So I see that I can do this with a number of his stuff. So then I folded it in quarters and pressed it so that I could find the center of the circle quilt and the panel so I folded the circle in quarters and I folded that panel in quarters and this is me checking that they all line up so that I know that I've got it centered this is the gist of how to do this this is me testing how I want to do this I cut a hole in the center of the fabric then I draw a quarter inch around 
and then I go on ahead and take that panel and make sure that the panel is a quarter it's actually a half an inch larger on all the sides and then I just sew it in there right sides together and that's the gist of what happens on a very 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 large scale <laughs> So this is what it looks like, just me testing it, because when I get to the big one, it's very difficult to record that while I was doing it. But you just work your way around, and I've got a quarter inch line there that's guiding me. So you can see the line that I've drawn on the quilt. It's in chalk and also friction pen, because I'm always using high contrast, so I have to use two. I have to use a chalk pen and a friction pen. So I drew the hole around the panel I drew the, the marking around the panel and now I'm going in and I'm gonna mark it again a quarter of an inch smaller than the actual panel the panel needs to be larger than the hole so I'm just following that line I've got my yardstick ruler out and I'm using a chalk marker and I'm not gonna say a chalk marker a chalk pencil and a friction pen because again I use high contrast so sometimes it's dark sometimes it's it's light and I need to be able to see what's happening so I'm turning it all around and I'm again marking a quarter inch on the inside so that makes the panel a half an inch smaller than the hole I mean that half an inch larger than the hole I grabbed some freezer paper just to stabilize this before I cut it um, I want the center to stop wiggling again I'm working on bias so we want to be sure to stabilize that just because we don't want it wiggling all around before we cut it because cutting it is scary I tell you but you talk about cutting with courage this is it right here it's like okay I have to believe that all my preparations <laughs> and all my test runs were correct and there we go that's the first cut and then I just move my ruler up and you see I'm using my quilter select because I do not want this moving at all while I am playing with it and again you're working on bias so be careful you don't want to just be stretching it all out and I'm not working in a huge workspace um, it's actually a very 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 small workspace but it does indeed work you just have to kind of want it so this is possible because again this is a large quilt <laughs> this quilt is 70 inches it's a nice size throw it's not tiny even though the pictures kind of make it look tiny in my opinion so again just going around with my rotary cutter and cutting up until i you can see there you can see the two lines and bam I've cut a whole hole in the center of the quilt yay it was fun <laughs> scary but fun now it's time to put that panel in there and again you're just going to put right sides together and then sew it in there before I did that I was I marked a quarter inch around the entire thing in theory you really I, I wasn't sure if I wanted the this part touching the feed dogs or the other the other part the actual quilt because there's so many seams and I thought no nah, I don't want those seams on the on the feed dog so I ended up marking that this too because I needed to be able to see what was happening so and I got a much cleaner result like this so you don't need to mark the bottom panel but you do need to mark this just mark a quarter inch and go for it and I needed to mark those corners because I needed to cut a small little slit so that it had room to breathe and lay flat which it does after I'm finished I've seen some new ways I shouldn't say new ways I've seen some other ways to get a nice mitered corner but this way worked perfectly fine so I'm just going around marking a quarter inch over the over those little humps and bumps 
this takes some time, but you just, you've got to do it. You put the work in, you put the effort in and your quilt will come out beautifully. And be careful because you are working on bias and this sucker wants to stretch out of place. You're working on all the bias. This whole quilt is just a big old bias quilt. <laughs> so now we're going to cut that slit. It's a quarter inch, of course. I'm cutting a quarter inch in all of the corners and I marked it with that little ruler, squared it up. And then once I finished doing that, I took the panel and you want to pin. You want to pin or use Wonder Clips to be sure that you are easing that panel in properly, making sure that you're not having more on one side than the other. You do need to pin or a Wonder Clip. So then I just go around and wonder clip it in there and make sure it's lining up the way that it's supposed to. So now I'm working on the back. This panel that I cut out, I decided to use as the back. And I just wanted to measure the, the center of the circle to see how big it was going to be. And I think it's a six inch circle. And so I went ahead and cut some uh, six and a half inch circles and applicate them on top. I didn't. I didn't piece them in there. In the future, I might start piecing these so that it's just smooth and we'll see. We'll see what comes uh, up next. I needed some bias binding because a circle quilt requires bias binding if you want it to lay flat. And so I just took a rectangle and I'm putting this on the 45 and now I'm cutting two and a quarter inch strips. This is probably, it's not the fastest way, but continuous bias is, but I needed this to be a little bit cleaner. With continuous bias tape, when I do it, the edges are so wavy and raggedy. I just don't love it. So I think it's easier to just cut strips and then just sew all the strips together and be done with it like that. I think that's, this is probably the cleanest way. Continuous bias is nice and fun. And I mean, you you're not really seeing the edges but for this I think this required something that was a little more exact now after you cut your strips at an angle like this you work your way down one side and then work your way back the other most of the strips have the right angles to join but you do have to correct a few of the angles so when you see me laying these out you'll see that they're all laid out one way but there will be a few that seem to have different points and you're like why is that happening and just to make this even more manageable I start turning it to the side and then I think that's the last strip that I cut I could have cut maybe oh, okay I cut one more and then that right there will be your excess if you absolutely need it you have it but I doubt it because you get so much you get so much bias I think this was a 28 inch square I forget I use the Robert Kaufman calculator to do all my calculations for my bindings my backings all of that that calculator has saved me many a day when I was in the quilt store trying to figure out what on earth how much do I need to buy quilt math you don't have to be able to do it you just have to know what app to use so that you could do it so this is where I correct the angle and so I just stack one that has the correct angle on there. And you can tell because you want the majority of them going the same direction. And then you just piece them all together. So the quilt came back from the quilters and she's basted through the panel. That panel is not quilted. She quilted all around the panel, but not the actual center part. So the first thing I did was put the binding on. And I just did my regular technique of sewing it to the back, pulling it over to the front, gluing it down with a little glue, and then using that foot to sew it down. Now I'm going through the panel and I'm making a grid because I want to make sure that this gets quilted about five inches apart. And it's basted, like I said, those are that's basting running through the quilt just to hold it together. Now, this is the coolest thing ever in order to make it to quilt it without it being noticeable, because I want the panel to be the showstopper, not the quilting. I do a stay stitch. I mean, I'm stitch in place for the most part. They have a tacking stitch on this machine. And when you hit it, it will tack. I didn't love it. I didn't feel like it was super secure. So what you do is you just shorten your stitch length, 
uh, pull your bobbin thread up to the top and take a couple of stitches in place and I'm using invisible thread you cannot detect where the quilting is period you just look find it see right there it's some it's a little thread that's what it looks like and when you look at it on a larger scale you really don't know where that's happening and that's the back that's the back of the quilt see look I'm trying to find where the quilting is so I just ran my hand to be sure that I got it about every five inches look there's one that's a string of but you can't see it you can <laughs> that invisible thread and that stay stitch I think it's so cool how much this is quilted and you can't see it you can't detect it on the front or the back I had another idea to hand tie this in different colors to match the painting which would have been you know fine too but this is so much better and it was so much faster I would have been hand tying forever so I went through and gave the quilt a haircut trying to find all of the pieces that were you know tack down and get all the loose threads or the extra threads and then I went through and got rid of all of the basting stitches after that was done best quilter ever I love what she did she was able to line this up pretty much and this is the back of the quilt your quilter cannot be concerned with the front and the back of the quilt you got to pick one but she was able to line it up pretty much so that this dropped right back where the panel was and so you really can't detect the quilting all over it. So now this is all the Swarovski stones that I put on there. Again, it's a ton. It's a ton of Swarovski stones. And I chose to hot fix them going forward. I probably will use a different technique. I mean, they stayed pretty good. But um, if I were selling this, uh, and this is my first time through, I would definitely E6000 those, period. <laughs> period. And I, the same amount of work was done. It wasn't like I was able to take a heat press and drop it on there. So I would just hand stone those with uh, E6000, which is uh, like an epoxy glue. And here is the bag. If you have not seen my tutorial on how to gift a quilt, you should because I show you how to make this bag. And at the mo for the most part, I make them all the same. Um, they're all about 20. I think it's 20 by 25. They finish. They do. And most of my quilts fit in them from the largest quilts that I've made to the, some of the smaller ones that I do. It's just a nice drawstring bag. And I call any quilt bag that I do with a bow is called the Cadillac finish. It's just an extra. Sometimes I do it with just the bag and sometimes I do it like this with the Cadillac finish. You make in order to do a bow, I just do so a big old tube. And then inside, I will insert a, what do they call it? A, um, what's the, it's like a stabilizer, a sewing stabilizer, not the iron on one. Cause when you start ironing on and you start moving the fabric, it starts to do funky stuff. And this is not as long as the tube. And I really like that too. You'll see why in a second. So now I'm just going to sew those edges together and flip it inside out. And you'll see that the tube right here. You see that that stabilizer is not as long as the tube. It gives me just some more opportunity when I do the gather, not to have so much bulk in the center. Like right here, I just have one layer as opposed to two. And I like that. And then you got to zhuzh your bow because that's all a bow is. is somebody doing a lot of fussing with it until it looks pretty. And that's pretty. And now we're going to go on ahead and do some tails. So that fabric, that blue fabric is Ruby Star Society. Finally got a chance to work with that, uh, with that brand. This was done by Rashida, which makes me happy. And here I am cutting the drawstrings for the bag. And then I cut a smaller and a longer tail since I had all this fabric. Because I bought, I think I bought a yard. No, maybe a half. No, I bought a yard. And in order to do this, you just sew another tube, but then I do a little, I sew it at an angle. And then when I turn it inside out, you get those cute little points. So I folded it right sides together, sewed down and then at an angle, cut off the excess and now I'm turning it. I do have a video on this. Again, it is the how to gift a quilt with the big pretty green bag in the thumbnail. 
So I decided to do four tails for this. So you've got the small one here. And then you've got the large one, which gives you four tails. And I made the larger one large, which is what I really wanted. But I wasn't going to waste the small one, too. So I did all of them. And I love the way that it came out. It's so cute. But I guess I would like it because I'm definitely a bow girl. <laughs> uh, definitely a girl who likes the bows. And you just kind of accordion fold it until you get it. Again, you got to zhuzh it. You got to play with it until you get what you like. And I'm using uh, pearl cotton to just tie it in the center. And then eventually the last piece that goes in the center, I, I hand stitch that in the back. And I attach it to the bag with safety pins so that people can take it off as they see fit. Uh, maybe they want to put it somewhere. Maybe they want to do something different. That's a bodkin tool which helps you thread things through the holes. It grabs the side, the, the, the material and pulls it through. I really like this one because it's got a lock on it. I love this one. It's like my favorite bodkin. I have others, but that one is my favorite. I'm sure I'll be talking about that on a live one day. It's, I find the greatest notions. I'm such a notions girl. I want all the notions. I love them, especially if they make a job easier. That is important. So then you start on one side and go all the way around back till you get to that side and then do the same thing on the other side. That's where people they people stop once they get to one side. Like, no, you got to keep going all the way around. And come back up, come back out on the same side that you started. And I'm just tying a big knot. And that's that. I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed making it for you and the recipient. And I will see you guys on my next video. Bye bye.